Hi, I'm Bob German, and this video is Teams Applications. What are they and why would I want one? This video will answer the questions, what is a Teams application? How can a Teams application extend the Teams user interface? And why is it useful to build apps for Microsoft Teams? So let's dive in. Microsoft Teams apps are apps that appear inside of the Teams UI. They can have tabs, bots, they can have these things called messaging extensions, which are basically extensions onto the menus surrounding your conversational messages. They can add to the activity feed. They can use adaptive cards, all kinds of cool things. Thing is that the Teams apps appear in the Teams UI, but they actually don't run in Teams. They have to run somewhere else. You supply web pages for the tabs, web services for the bots and messaging extensions, etc., and your service can run anywhere on the internet, which opens up a lot of opportunity for reuse of existing applications as long as they're web-based. You can tell Teams where everything is using an app package. Inside the app package is a manifest.json file that says, hey, there's a tab here with this URL. There's a bot there with that URL, etc. Then that gets zipped up with a couple of icons that can then be uploaded to a team, published in your enterprise app catalog, or even in the Teams store. Apps can run in a Microsoft Teams channel, in a group conversation, or in a personal basis, one-on-one -on -one with an individual user. These are called Teams application scopes. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. This first example is an insurance adjuster scenario where we have a group of insurance adjusters who spend a lot of time out in the field inspecting property damage, looking over the repairs, renovations, etc. So of course they're collaborating in Microsoft Teams. The first application is this Get Starting application, which is actually a personal app that's pinned to the left navigation to help people learn how to use Microsoft Teams in the rest of Office 365. This is actually a SharePoint-based portal that Microsoft makes available. I have a whole blog article about how to set this up. And so everybody can come in here and learn how to use the tools, and it's available to them very easily right in the left navigation. This is similar to Microsoft Shifts, which is often used by first-line workers. And again, it makes a lot of sense to put that right inside of Teams where they spend a lot of time. Now let's go into the channel being used by our adjusters. And you can see that in addition to the conversation and normal files tab, we have a home page. And this is the SharePoint site that they used to use, and they still do use, where information is published for everyone in the team. It can also be shown as a tab inside of Microsoft Teams, and that actually counts as a Teams app. Here's a Power app where our team actually does their site inspections and logs all the information. This, once again, is easy to make into a Teams application so that it can be published into Microsoft Teams. And finally, here's a SharePoint Framework web part that I wrote that's also a Teams application. And as you can see here, it actually is going through everybody's calendars, pulling out the visits that they're actually doing. And then if you click on one, there's all the information that I would need to go on this visit. So imagine for a minute that I'm Katie and I have a scheduling conflict. So I'm actually going to need to ask my teammates uh, to see if, if somebody can cover it for me. So this little box actually integrates the tab into the conversation. So back in the, in the conversation, I can see that Katie's looking for some help, and I can click on a deep link that'll take me exactly to where I need, where I can see everything I, I would want to know about this customer visit and decide whether or not I can help Katie out. So all of these examples are really showing how you can streamline work. We're putting information in context right where people are working. Part of the problem of changing applications is not so much flipping from one app to the other, it's the fact that the information is organized differently inside of every application. So when you switch applications, you typically have to find where you were, find the information that you're working with. All these examples bring the application, bring that information right inside of the team in context so that we don't have to search for specific information in order to complete tasks. This next example is an HR hiring app, which will assist a group of people who are endeavoring to fill some openings at a Datum Corporation. So you can see that 
they're just working in teams as normal, but they also have this hiring board application, which is a tab that shows all of the openings, the candidates, and where they are in the process. Everything right where you need it. Now, uh, let me add another tab and show you how the tab configuration process works. Here, I actually added the tab right from the UI, and I can configure the tab with a name and pick which job posting I want to highlight inside of this tab. Now, what you're really looking at is a configuration page that was provided by the backing application. Let me go ahead and save this. And there's the tab with the information about this specific uh, opening. Now, this application also includes a bot, so let's talk to the bot. In order to get a bot's attention in Microsoft Teams channels, you need to at mention the bot. So I'll ask for help. Almost every bot can provide help, and here's a list of the things the bot can do. So now let's list the open positions. So what we get back is not just boring text, but it's an adaptive card. It's much easier to visualize the information here and to see what's going on, and I can even interact with the card to view the details about one of the positions or to add a new job posting. So adaptive cards like this one can actually be a form that you fill out. So let's go ahead and add a new job posting to the environment, to the database. Now think about how many emails this saved versus having a standalone talent application. Typically, you would have to email somebody, ask them to add uh, a new entry to the job database. You might have to go back and forth a few times to get all the information straight. And then when entry is finally there and the new job is open, you'd have to email everybody and maybe it doesn't get lost in all the rest of the email. Instead, everything is done right here in Microsoft Teams. It's like working in the open and everybody can see exactly what happened. Of course, there could be a workflow involved and this card could be updated as the workflow proceeds. Uh, all these are options using adaptive cards inside of a bot in Microsoft Teams. But what if I wanted to send an adaptive card, some business data, a little bit of context to the rest of my team? Well, we had a candidate come through today, and I'd like to get feedback from everybody who was in the interview loop. So let me go pull that candidate into view using a messaging extension. I think it was Scott something or other. Well, we can filter down the list, find the right candidate, and here we have another adaptive card but this time, instead of the bot sending it, I'm sending it out to the team. The team can now directly on the card leave their feedback. So again, no need to switch uh, applications or find the candidate inside of some other application. The context is all right here, streamlining the work. If I want to see what the feedback was, I can click another button. And what I get is a task module, which is basically a little pop-up dialog box that can be made up of adaptive cards or any web page that you might want to put here. So why build a Microsoft Teams app? Well, first, I think you've seen that Teams apps streamline work. They put the information in context right where people are working and allow people to easily share application context with one another without even thinking about it. They're just having a conversation. It also can bring teamwork into business apps. If you have an application that's already out there that doesn't have any teamwork related functionality, well, you can promote teamwork and information sharing by bringing it into Teams and in the process, reduce the need for email. This also brings lower cost and lower time to value by avoiding reinventing collaboration features in your application reusing existing app services, and reducing the learning curve for Teams users who already know how to use Microsoft Teams. Finally, Teams apps are discoverable. Users can find them right in the Teams UI, like that application that was pinned to the left rail, for example, or a tab inside of a channel. You can pin tabs easily or deploy them as part of a Teams template. Thanks for watching this Microsoft 365 Patterns and Practices video. If you like this video, please subscribe to the Patterns and Practices YouTube channel at aka.ms slash spnp videos. I'm Bob German. You can follow me on Twitter at Bob1German, and please check out my blog at bob1german.com. 
That's all for this time, and thanks for watching.